Hello and welcome our beloved viewers to RTD's News English Edition. As usual, we begin tonight's news with the major and top highlights. Let's follow. National Energy Policy Workshop And on the international scene, we got Gazprom will fill its obligations across Vladimir Putin on visit to Tehran. Those were our major top highlights. Welcome back to our newsroom, our beloved viewers. The Minister of Energy in charge of Natural Resources, Mr. Yunus Ali Gedi, uh, proceeded today at the Kempinski Hotel to the official launch of the Technical Cooperation Program with the International Atomic Energy Agency. This program focuses on the strategic planning of the national strategy policy for the next 20 years. In addition to the Ministry of Energy in charge of natural resources, this launching workshop was attended by members of the government representatives of the United Nations system, the IAEA representative, and the executives of the Ministry of Energy. Entitled G2001, the project consists of technical support to strengthen the ministry's capacity in energy systems, analysis and planning. The IAEA will provide technical support through a national project over a four-year period from 2022 to 2025. The Minister of Energy in charge of natural resources, Mr. Yunus Ali Gedi, in a speech delivered on this occasion, thanked first of all the guests for having responded to his invitation. He also ind indicated that without energy, no development is possible. Energy is therefore the engine of development on countries, said the Minister in substance. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Robley, proceeded this morning to the official reception of a mobile hospital on a PK-12 gradually offered uh, of the United States of America. Present were the U.S. Ambassador to Djibouti, Mr. Jonathan Pratt, and the Commander General of Kamli Muni, and many executives of the Department of Health. It is a donation made within the framework of civil-military cooperation consisting of a mobile hospital equipped with the latest medical equipment with a technical platform with a capacity of 60 beds. This new acquisition of a mobile hospital is a major opportunity for our country to deal effectively with health and epidemiological crisis. This device will strengthen the medical health interventions by relying on the already existing structure to respond to epidemic threats anywhere and everywhere in our territory. The U.S. Ambassador to Djibouti, Mr. Jonathan Brad, said he is proud to work closely and daily with the Djibouti authorities to further strengthen the basis for a fruitful cooperation. For his part, the Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Rogli, thanked the American people for this important donation, which illustrates the perfect collaboration between our two countries. Which, as we've just discussed, does not need to remain in PK-12 unless it's the best place for it. So working shoulder to shoulder with our civil affairs team, our engineers, the members of my own task force, which I'm so proud of, members of the embassy, and most importantly, the Djiboutian partners from across the community, the Ministry of Health, even some of our Ministry of Defense friends have helped to put the concept into a reality. I'm very proud of the entire team, not just mine. This contribution to the capacity for medical capability, for a response to a disaster, is just a, a very small token of the deep, enduring friendship and the meaningful, important relationship between all of the U.S. government and their deep care and affection for and appreciation for the Djiboutian people and our partnership with, in total, the Djiboutian people, the government, the communities, all of our friends. Indeed. The ambassador said that this is a second mobile hospital, the first being given to the Djibouti Ministry of Defense. He stressed that the United States stands constantly by Djibouti to support the government's efforts for the development of the country. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Robley, reiterated his thanks on behalf of the Djiboutian people to the broadly American people for this beautiful proof of frontier and lasting cooperation. 
moving towards the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, which is also known in short as EGAD, which organized yesterday at the Sheraton Hotel and National Training Workshop on the links between illegal immigration and terrorism for the different defense and security forces. This training workshop aimed at the different defense and security forces and whose main objective is to study the relationship between terrorism and illegal immigration in the EGAD region was chaired by the Director General of the National Police, Colonel Abdurrahman Ali Kahin. In addition to the Director General of the National Police, the opening of uh, this workshop was attended by representatives of IGAD, namely the Head of Counter-Tourism and Maritime Security, Mr. Dawood Alwan, the Head of Mission of IGAD in Djibouti, and other members of the IGAD office in Djibouti. In a speech by the Director General of the National Police, Colonel Abdurrahman Ali Kahin, in this workshop, he explained that our country, due to its strategic geographical location, has become a transient destination for illegal immigrants. The Union of the French-Speaking Press of Djibouti organized today at the Sheraton Hotel the sixth edition of the Press Prize. This award ceremony took place in the presence of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Communication in charge of Posts and Telecommunications, Mr. Ahmad Yusuf Elmi, the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Mr. Hu Bin, the President of the UPF Djibouti, Mr. Kinid Ibrahim Hussein, and many participants of Djibouti and media professionals. The Press Award is an initiative of the UPF Djibouti to award annually the best communicators in the Djibouti media. In a speech delivered on this occasion, the President of the UPF Djibouti recalled the progress of this award since its inception and the utilism generated by this annual meeting of the Djibouti Press family. A prize that has stimulated emulation with this cooperation, the press award will be, he said, always this in this moment of reunion of the family of the Djibouti media is a moment of uh, communion of hearts and minds marked by so many. For his part, the ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Mr. Hu Bin, he made a point of expressing his warm congratulations to the receptions who distinguished themselves by their excellent work. Djibouti media professionals work daily to strengthen the sharing of information among the entire population, which has promoted not only solidarity, cohesion, and virtue of society, but also friendship and cooperation between Djibouti and the countries of the world including China, he said. A day of construction for those who have distinguished themselves by the quality of their production during the past year. A day of glory to distinguished talents, talents that must serve as a model for future generations, he said. He reminded the audience that the Ministry of Communication in charge of Post and Telecommunications has always supported Inative to promote the press, which does a remarkable job every day with a dedicated men and women who are passionate about their work. The training of media professionals is a priority of the MCPT as evidenced by the series of training initiated in recent months, he said. In a speech he delivered on this occasion, the president of the Francophonie Press Union, Mr. Kennedy Ibrahim Hussein, addressed the progress made by this award since its launch and the utilism it arose in participating in this annual event for the Djiburian Press family and motivated joining this union. He said that the press award is to reunite the Djiburian media family and enhance communication between them and cooperation in the field of upgrading media information. The Secretary General of the Ministry of Communication in charge of Posts and Telecommunications, Mr. Ahmad Yusuf Elmi, said that the sixth edition of this kind, the first award organized by the Union for the Francophonie Press of Djibouti, has become over time an annual appointment to reward, to reward the best communicators in the field of print media, audiovisual, but also the online press. A meeting and exchange with partners organized by the D-Money Management at the Sheraton Hotel launched this morning. The aim of the day was to raise awareness among D-Money distributors about the new remunerations in favor of these partners. This day was also an ideal opportunity to raise awareness of the use of electronic money today in a world where technology plays a very large role in the daily life of the average Djiburian. The director of D-Money, Madame Hebo Mahmoud, before an audience of partners from Djibouti City, Balbala, and all the regions were present at the Sheraton this morning to exchange edge that have stormed the room al Khaimah Sheraton on the usefulness and ease of use of electronic money. In other words, to proceed to the change the mentalities of the population somehow uh, during this uh, fruitful exchange, the director of uh, D-Money we assured that the digital money being the twin of the federal money is assured by the monetary authority that is the central bank of Djibouti that is used without risk. With the penetration rate in strong growth, mobile uh, payment is now a trend that is accelerating among the population. Be some of a lot of people they don't know it's the D money you can use with internet and without internet. So the reason for this one is, was to be a partner with D money and uh, uh, the strategic of D money they change it completely. So in a situation that to be win to win. So win with the customer, win with the partner, win with D money. 
So uh, today there is a lot of things changed, uh, and maybe we like uh, to give an explanation of how easy it is to use a uh, the DMNA system and how everyone can get a benefit from it. In the framework of a project to strengthen the capacities of local consumer institutions and mechanisms for the prevention and resolution of pastoral conflicts in the cross-border area of Gobad in the Dikhil region, supported by GIZ, organized in Dikhil from July 17 to 19, a workshop for the restitution of the study on the analysis of the moods and conditions of pastoral life in place for the prevention and resolution of pastoral conflicts and disputes in tri- and inter-community in the cross-border zone of Gobad. The workshop was co-chaired by the Prefect, Mr. Yusuf, and the Vice President of Dikhil, and brought together members of the Dikhil local peace community, religious and traditional leaders of the two pastoral communities living in the Gubad area as well as women's and youth organizations. The project consists of revitalizing and operationalizing the local peace community with greater participation and involvement of women for the consolidation of peace and securing of pastoral life in the Gubad cross-border zone. On Sunday and Monday, it was the turn of the localities of Giri, Adailo, and Randa to take the stage. The local associations presented a variety of sports and recreational activities, but it was especially time in the favor of the traditional game competitions. Athletics, soccer, chess, volleyball, wrestling, everything was there for the launch of these games in an unprecedented success in terms of the tourism generated around. Placed under the patronage of the Security of State for Sports, these events are intended to contribute to the promotion and widespread practice of a sport for the benefit of different age groups and all social categories. The activities took place in good conditions thanks to the combined efforts of all stakeholders, in the case the officials of the SES and the authorities and local sport actors. The director of the regions, Mr. Yusuf Abdullah, said that these games will be organized every year by the ministry to avoid that they fall into oblivion, but rather they are perpetrated to maintain social cohesion. Moving to sports now, the national soccer team left Monday evening around 8.30 from the international airport of Djibouti to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Led by Mr. Hussein al member of the committee, the delegation of the national team includes, among others, the team manager, Sharmaki Mi'ad, coach Bekela, his deputy, Mohamed Hassan Kaku, the members of his technical and medical staff. The national technical director will accompany the Sharks in this trip. The Sharks will play the first leg of the Chang qualification match against Brunudi, and the second leg is still in Tanzania. Shifting gears. Shifting gears now towards the international scene. Uh, visiting Tehran on Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin assured that Gazprom was fulfilling its obligations. Gas deliveries have been falling by 60% in recent weeks. Gazprom fully meets its obligations to its suppliers. This is what Vladimir Putin said at a press conference after talks in Tehran, an announcement made while gas deliveries to Europe are falling. But this hour... Beloved viewers, we conclude this edition. Thank you for being with us. And make sure to tune in later for more. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you.